Welcome back my legends and today I decided to make a fun little tier list video sorry not the strongest legends lore wise I'm still mad about the whole Loa beats revenant thing so I decided to make this tier list video based on the pathfinders quest book and ranking every single chapter and giving a short summary what I think of each chapter so let's begin so starting off with pathfinders prologue this one is going to be a B it's nice short and simple it lets us know that pathfinder starting his journey to find his creator no real complaints about here it's just a solid chapter so the first real chapter we're going to deal with is lifeline now lifeline story is very interesting because it tells us about the history of the titanfall universe how it all started on planet earth when they discovered this element x and technology just expanded it tells us about the corporate drama and in the frontier wars and lifeline explaining to us that both the militia and the imc were no better that they both had broken promises in the end the people got screwed over so that's one aspect and lifeline also tells also is her backstory about how she was a shelter rich girl that had no idea how the people in the outlands lived until octane kind of pushed her to explore new things and that's when she fell in love with this rock band called the flyer liars and she liked their music she stayed with them for over a year and then went back home to confront her parents about her knowing the truth that there were war profiteers and basically the whole chapter revolves around lifeline discovering her own personal freedom and decided to repay her family sins by becoming somebody that helps people in the outlands and it's just a really good chapter all around i'll give it an a so the next chapter is gibby's chapter and basically he tells us how the people in the frontier moved to the outlands to discover a better home and that they were not too happy when the imc were just claiming that this land belonged to them when they abandoned them a long time ago and basically wars broke out and then gibby tells us the story about how he met nick in thunderdome when he ran away from home because gibby's parents refused to let him fight in the the outland civil war which is basically it's a war for resources which i'm guessing this is why the gibraltar family refused to fight in the war because the gibraltar family are the so-called protector of the innocents and and taking people's resources even though they need those resources for the planet's survival it just feels wrong to say that they want to help people by taking other people's stuff so i'm guessing this is why they didn't participate in the war but gibby didn't really understand that so he convinced nick that they should go fighting together so they stole his father's bike they got caught in a mudslide and unfortunately Gibby's dad lost an arm and to this day Nick took the blame for everything and Gibby has been living with that guilt ever since and that every bad thing that has ever happened to them goes back to that one event when Gibby refused to tell the truth and it still haunts him to this day so what this chapter establishes that Gibby is human he makes mistakes he's not perfect he doesn't always make the right call and if Gibby ever wants to be with Nick again one day he's going to have to to tell the truth so i'll give this chapter an a so the next chapter we learn about watson now watson's chapter is very interesting because it does talk about how the games kind of work how her dad luke paquet basically built the entire games by himself with the help of kuban bliss giving him suggestions and also respawning might be canon although they don't really explain how it works but basically her whole chapter revolves around how she was able to build the ring by making this prototype experiment in the forest and connecting Rafe and Watson together via her ghost that she saw in Dr. Singh's lab. Overall, I give this chapter a solid B. So next one, we're going to talk about Rafe's chapter. And I'll be 100% honest, this chapter is a D. If one word could describe this chapter about Rafe, it's just cringe. Now, some people are going to say that, Kevin, you're being too harsh. No. When Rafe escaped from Dr. Singh's lab, she basically was on the island and basically stalked Luke Paquette and Watson basically trying to figure out who they were and somehow Rafe convinced herself that she was Luke Paquette's wife and the Natalie person that he was trying to look for even though we know Natalie is Watson and you have to turn off your brain because I understand that Rafe wanted to have a connection but it's not believable in all honesty and unless you're a new person that has zero idea about the lore then maybe you'll find it funny but most people know about the lore and so it just came off as annoying and like how did you not put two and two together so unfortunately i'll give it a d it's like somebody setting up a joke and you know the 
punchline, but they take forever to say the joke. It was that kind of story. Now to one of my favorite chapters, and that's Bangalore's. Now, this chapter, I'm just gonna say it right now, is S tier. I was kind of worried about Bangalore's chapter, hoping that they didn't like tone her down or give her just a generic story. No, everything I could wish for in a Bangalore chapter, they exceeded my expectations. Honestly, like Bangalore's story basically gives us her perspective of the IMC and that not every IMC soldier was a bad person. That the people that were the real bad guys were the people on top of the pyramid and not the average day soldiers because Bangalore gives us a family perspective that told us that basically they were just average people. And this chapter basically show us that war is a matter of perspective. So Bangalore's chapter is so good because it kind of shows us Bangalore's perspective about a soldier that never really questioned her orders and was trying to get revenge on the militia until she learned the truth that they were on the wrong side of the war. So I'll give this an S. It's really good. My personal favorite. Now moving on to chapter 6. Now chapter 6 talks about the Allen Civil War a little bit more in detail and why his brothers went to go fight in it. But other than that, it also tells us how Mirage and his mom were dealing with the fact that Mirage lost his brothers in the war. So it's a sad story about how Mirage basically was trying to make his mom feel better by using his decoys and pretending that his brothers were still around only for them to realize in the end that the reason they were going along with this charade is because this was a way for the other person to cope with the fact that they're no longer around and it's just a solid chapter all around i give it a b so the next chapter is chapter seven now this chapter i had a hard time reading because of the icelandic nordic words because sometimes i had to go to the other page that i just read to look for the word that bloodhound was using and overall i wasn't a big fan of the bloodhound chapter book because the story basically revolved about bloodhound and this other guy named boone and how boone wanted to find this rare animal and bloodhound basically helped them and they became close and basically the whole chapter felt like one of those chick flick novels where bloodhound is this like person from a village that nobody's heard of and then this stranger comes out of nowhere that's an expert hunter in this case boone boone needs bloodhound's help to track this rare creature they become close to each other boone wants bloodhound to go with them bloodhound says no and then boone kind of betrays bloodhound and then bloodhound goes after him and overall I, I just wasn't a big fan of this chapter although it's personal people's taste so i'll give it a c chapter eight is very interesting because it's about two characters giving their perspectives about the outlands one of them is loba and the other one is octane now it's kind of funny how loba is really connected to the rich and powerful and keeps tabs of what they're doing at all times and octane just does not know what's going on in the outlands political wise but he does know how to have fun in each planet so it's kind of interesting how they can describe each planet in their own unique way but lore wise the thing that's funny is that octane kind of represents everything loba hates somebody who literally grew up in wealth and had nothing to worry about while loba and her parents had to pretty much come from the slums and make their own name so yeah it's an interesting chapter scene from somebody goes from poor to rich and give their perspective and octane being rich and not really understanding the poor side of things because he's always gotten what he wants so yeah i'll give this a solid b in next chapter now chapter nine is just like chapter eight two characters talking in the same chapter and those two characters are crypto and caustic in this chapter i'm going to give an a it's basically caustic and crypto playing the game chicken in other words trying to intimidate the other person that they know who they are and what happens in the end is that pathfinder is able to put their clues together and realize wait a minute what if these two characters alexander knox and taejun park what if they had the same mom that'll make them stepbrothers so it's just a fun chapter where they're trying to get in each other's heads and then in the end they're having a staring contest so yeah that's an a and let's move on now the next chapter is revenant now this one is very interesting because a lot of people in the beginning were saying that they were disappointed in chapter 10 and i was very confused why they were saying that because i believe chapter 10 is a tier and here's the reason why because revenant is basically telling us his backstory without really telling us his backstory that makes any sense because the writers want us to assume that revenant is caleb cross and that he was the one that killed bob's family but revenant starts out the story by telling us bob's perspective which makes it seem like revenant could be bob and that he was turned into a murder robot against his will but then revenant goes back 
Vector tell us that he's Caleb Cross. So it's very interesting, my legends, because Revenant chapter is the definition of perspective. Every chapter we get to hear each legend's perspective, but Revenant tells us two people's perspectives like he knows what happened. How is that possible? Well, if you're like me and you're kind of crazy, you can understand where the writers might take this story. And funny enough, it's one of my most watched audiobook lore videos. So it's very clear that a lot of people like this chapter, despite a lot of people saying in the early goings that they don't like it. If you take the writer's word for word, you're never going to understand the deeper meaning. And that's why I think this is going to be one of those chapters that people look back about maybe two years from now and be like, oh, so that's what they meant. And yeah, personally, I give it an A and let's move on to the next one. Moving on to chapter 11, and that's going to be Pathfinder finding out about his creators. Um, Kubit Bliss basically gives him a chip that explains everything that happened in Project Iris and how he was created to save the Outlands via Brantium and also learns that one of his creators was somebody he tried to date. And so what's very interesting that is Pathfinder is actually connected to four legends. One of them being Gibby via his grandfather Alekin, the other one being Watson with her grandmother Emily Paquette, another one being Dr. Summers because of her son Newton Summers and also Bangalore because her uncle Al, even though they weren't related, he was there in security duty protecting the group. So it's very interesting how Pathfinder is connected to four legends. I'm guessing in the future, he might be connected to more legends in some way, shape or form. But until then, that's my tier list. Let me know what you think or name me your tier list in the comments. I'm actually curious to see how people will compare their list to mine. And I'll see you all next time. Peace. Stumble in the dark, I'm shattered Cause I'm finally unbreakable